people homelands. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Kimberly Danko Begay. I am the current president for the um, AIEA. And as an introduction, I'd like, I'll just introduce myself in my traditional language, which is Kiowa. So, Nawa Kwa Hatsoem Toya, Goigu, Masep Chawi, Aim Da, Kimberly Danko Begay Akan. Um, again, Kimberly Danko Begay, I am of the Kiowa, Caddo, and Pawnee Nations, originally from Oklahoma. And Jerry, if you could take some time, um, I, well, actually, our executive officers who are on the call, if you would uh, please introduce yourselves, and we'll start with Esther, and uh, we'll go down from there. And then after that, Jerry, if you could just go down the participants list to allow everybody a brief introduction. Esther? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Esther Nystrom. I am the Vice President for the Native American Indian Education Association and also the Program Specialist for Mesa Public Schools Native American Education Program. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today and I hope you um, take a lot of information away today that will help you with your programs and share those with your peers. Thank you. Um, I'll go next. Uh, hello, everyone, and good morning. My name is Jerry Thomas, um, and I'm the AIEA secretary. And also, I work at the Intertribal Council of Arizona in Phoenix as a healthy native youth specialist. So, welcome, everyone. I don't see um, Lynn is on just yet. We'll have her introduce herself when she comes on. And I know um, Travis is going to be a little bit late for the meeting today. So um, Jerry, if we could just go down the participants list to allow those to introduce who are currently on the call. Okay, so I'm just going down the list as they appear on my screen. So we have Joaquin Preston. Uh oh, Joaquin, can't hear you. Okay, is that better? Oh, yes. Okay. Totsoni initially, Kiklai, but she's cheating, please the clinic, the cheche, Totichini, the Chinole, that Kaylin, and then Asha, Joaquin Preston, Yenisha. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joaquin Preston. I am the National uh, Indian Education Association's Tribal State Policy Associate. Um, so it's good to meet everybody, and um, I am based here in Tempe, even though um, NIEA is headquartered in Washington, D.C. I am based here in Arizona, so you might be seeing me a little bit um, more around. Jerry, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, next on my list, I have a D tag. Yes, uh, David Tag. I am the uh, Native American Education Liaison for the Casa Grande Union High School District. Glad to be here. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up we have John Bastion. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy Friday to you all. Uh, my name is John Bastian. I work at Rio Salado College, and uh, it's about it for me for today. Thank you. Thank you, John, for being here. Okay, next up, we have Leanne Bayforce. Dr. Leanne Bayforce. She may say Arizona, Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Leanne Bayforce. Um, I've actually transitioned roles since um, the last meeting I attended. Um, I am now the Circles of Care Project Director for the San Carlos Apache Tribe. So I am with you from uh, San Carlos, uh, Southeast Arizona. Thank you. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, next up we have Lindsay on the line. Hi everyone, um, my name is Lindsay Cotton. I work at uh, Maricopa Community Colleges at the district office in the Office of American Indian Outreach with Winona Theory and, and Carissa Sundas. Thank you. Next we have Paul on the line. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see you. Uh, my name is Paul Fulginetti. I'm the director of Dropout Recovery Program at Career Success Schools. We serve uh, native uh, areas, the reservation rural, also urban, uh, to get kids on a safety net back into school so they can graduate from their home school or uh, graduate with us, but that's to get them back in track. So thanks. Good to see everybody. I'm looking forward to the meeting. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have Beth Lewis. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Beth Lewis. I'm the director of Save Our Schools Arizona. We are a grassroots organization fighting for stronger public schools statewide. And I'm also an elementary school teacher in Tempe. So just here to listen and learn. So thank you. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next up we have Sami. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sami Waitiwa. I am the Policy Specialist Tribal Liaison with the Arizona Department of Education. Good to be here. Thanks, everyone. Okay, next up we have Zani. Hi, good morning. Yat Eshe, Zani Oliva, Sinishia, Hashkanazo, Nishle, Nakai Bashachi, Nakai Era Shanala, Do Sinjikina Era Shache. Um, I just introduced myself in my Navajo language. Um, it's nice to join you all. I work with Dr. Marty Lindsay and Ben Richmond at the University of Arizona Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center um, as a program coordinator for the Community Engagement Corps. Um, it's nice to meet you all, and I'm happy to join you all from um, here from Tucson. Thank you, Zani. Okay, next up, we have Ben Richmond. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Richmond. Uh, I am the Associate Director of Community Engagement here at the Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center at the University of Arizona, and it's good to see everyone. Thank you, Ben, for being here. Um, that is it with the introduction, so we can move forward, Kim. Thank you, Jerry. And again, welcome everybody. Um, I forgot to also mention that I work here at the Amphitheater Public School District as a coordinator for the Native American Education Program um, here in Tucson. So um, that's the other role that I play. So again, thank you for your um, introductions and welcome, welcome to our meeting today. Uh, moving forward on the agenda, we have our um, approval of the minutes. And as mentioned, um, Jerry had dropped the minutes into the chat box. And I am going to give us at least two minutes to review and then call for a motion to approve. Jerry, if you can uh, put them up on the screen for those who are unable to download. Thank okay. you.
Okay, thank you, Jerry, for allowing everyone to view those on the screen. And if everybody has had time to briefly run through that, if I could call for a motion to approve. Good morning, this is Esther. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, motion on the floor, is there a second? This is Jerry and I motion or second. Okay, motion to approve all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, all those opposed? Any abstinations? Motion has passed. So thank you all for that. And we'll move on forward in our agenda. Next on the agenda is the president's report. Um, I'll keep it brief because we do um, have a lot on the agenda today I'd like to get to. Um, but first and foremost, just wanna remind all the programs who do receive Johnson O'Malley funds that the funding application is due on May 1st. So please make sure that you have um, all the information and data needed to complete the application to get that in by the 1st. There is a calendar that was sent out um, back in, I wanna say some time back, I don't remember the exact month, but um, Terry had combined the calendar uh, of the whole program for the for the year um, at our request. And so I encourage you to review that and make sure you keep those dates and deadlines marked on your own calendars for that with the Johnson O'Malley. Again, the deadline for that application is May 1st. Um, with that, we have our Title VI application, part two uh, for our Title VI funding that is out. That actually opened up April 5th and it will close on May 14th. So this is where you have to gather the remaining um, data and input that into the new system, the OMB uh, Max Survey link. Um, that will be sent to your superintendent. So please uh, make sure that you contact them if you have not received that link just yet to get into the actual application. Um, again, the application for that is due on March, I'm sorry, on May 14th. So be sure to get your um, information in for that as well. Um, the other thing I just wanted to make mention is that um, the House Bill 2705, uh, just as a reminder, this is something we have been talking about in our recent meetings. This is a bill that is for dress code policies. Um, it is for tra traditional tribal regalia, objects of cultural significance, and for graduation ceremonies and definitions. Um, I'm sorry, not definitions, but for the graduation ceremonies. Again, as a reminder, this was introduced by Representative Teller and carried on by Representative Sosi. It was introduced on January 27th and it pa first passed the House on February 11th. Um, for an update um, on this bill, specifically for our students, um, it has passed the Senate. Um, it went through all the um, readings and it finally came through a third reading that was passed on the 13th which was transmitted to the house from that. And as of April 14th, it has been transmitted to the governor. Um, this bill is very important for all of our students within Arizona. If it is signed, um, well, as soon as the governor signs off on this, it immediately becomes um, law that our students will, who are graduating this year will be able to wear the regalia um, at their graduation ceremony should they have them in person. But this will be a law that will be set in place for our state so that in the future, we will not have to combat this and challenge this every year as so many of our districts have in the past. And so this is a victory for um, our Native American students. And so I just wanna acknowledge all those who had a hand in um, sending in your comments to the legislation during this time. So we are uh, very thankful that this went through this year. Last year it was introduced, but it eventually died with one of the bills. And so um, we're happy and um, very excited that this bill has passed. So it is at the governor and we are waiting hopefully for him to sign off on it soon so that it does become immediate law. Um, with that, the other thing I just wanted to mention, um, if you have been keeping up with the Rosemont mine situation, uh, just to give you a brief 
um, reviewed the, there's three tribes who are involved with this suit, um, which is a court case um, at the federal level that um, was brought on by the Navajo, the Hopi, and the Tana Otham tribes. And uh, I'm sorry, not the Navajo, this is for the um, Tahana Otham, Pasquayaki, and Hopi tribes uh, that brought the suit against the Rosemont mining um, uh, developers that we wanted to stop this because it's, it's a devastation that's going to take place upon our sacred homelands here in this area. Um, we actually had a devastating blow for um, that particular area on, um, let's see, I believe it uh, happened recently in March that the courts had ruled a victory for the Rosemont mine developers that the Clean Waters Act is not uh, applicable to this particular case. Um, that's due in part because of the uh, waters of the U.S. ruling that came out during the Trump administration. And so the tribes are, and the lawyers for the tribes are, um, again, wanting, you know, opposing this, that saying that it's um, insubstantial for those tribes because the water and, and it's just a devastation for the area's um, environment itself. And so this is something that is an ongoing um, case. I highly encourage you to keep apprised of what's happening with this um, because it does directly affect our community uh, for the tribes here in Southern Arizona and within the state of Arizona that could set precedence for um, what's taking place in the future for um, those uh, that do come and are a part of Arizona. So please keep that in mind and just keep uh, your eyes open for any information that comes regarding that. And so um, let me see what else was there I wanted to touch base on. Um, let me look at student opportunities. I'm sure Ben will probably um, follow up with this, but with their um, tribal youth vo tribal voices youth conference that will is coming up um, again that date is set for April 22nd Ben if it's changed you can let us know um, with that and again uh, there's a lot of uh, scholarships that are out there I know that the uh, full circle scholarship is still available and I believe the um, Cobell scholarship has already closed but please encourage your students to keep apprised of those opportunities. Uh, for funding out there. And we'll get to a lot of um, our own scholarship with, from AIA that we're going to be releasing soon. And um, Jerry will talk about that later on in the agenda. And so um, actually that is all that I have um, as far as a report today. As I mentioned that we wanna get um, to a lot on the agenda. And so I'll end with that. Um, are there any questions? Yes, thank you, Ben. The new date for that youth conference I mentioned is going to take place May 1st, and it's going to be from 9 to 12. And uh, again, he can provide more details um, at the end. Okay, if there are no questions, we can move on to the treasurer's report. And let me see if, okay, Travis is not on. And so he did say that he um, had a conflict with the meeting for today, but that he would try and make it um, if he can uh, get, out, get out of the other meeting a lot quicker. So as of uh, for his report, we can look at um, the minutes from last month. He did say that um, there has been no activity in the month of March and the balance should be the same as the time he had reported it um, last month. So for that, with our Desert Financial Credit Union, uh, for our checking account, we have $934.86. In our savings account, we have $42,593.30. And again, with we, we do have upcoming expenses from the Youth Winter Camp Compensation that's going out to our college mentors. And so um, again, when we have that uh, amount, Travis will uh, report on that at next month's meeting. That's with the financial bank and the institution that we have that was created for the Arizona Indian Education Association some years back. So that's what we ha currently have in that account. As Travis had mentioned at the last meeting of how the Intertribal Council of Arizona has become our fiscal agent, 
they have graciously stepped in to help cover a lot of the expenses during that transitioning period. So with the ITCA account, expenses that were incurred are $46,627.03. The revenue is $10,810.37. And the deficit is $35,816.57. Um, again, he'll give a full report um, at the next meeting uh, for the month of May. And I believe that is all that um, he did send. Are there any questions about the treasurer's report? Okay, and again, we are very thankful and um, very appreciative that ITCA has stepped in to help us and assist us in our transition during this financial process. And hopefully um, we'll be able to um, get out on our own once again soon. So thank you, ITCA. If there are no questions, then we can move on in the agenda. And the next item on the um, agenda is old business. And the first item up is our educators banquet. And so I am going to turn it over to Jerry to provide some updates. Um, for our educators banquet, or we also call it the educators award celebration. Um, the purpose of this event is to recognize and support American Indian uh, teachers and then also American Indian um, students that are going to be teachers. So we uh, came up with this event around 2017, and it didn't really come to fruition until 2019 when we had our first um, in-person event. So we held it as a banquet where we provided food, we provided um, an auction and we also you know just celebrated our educators there and we had you know a bunch of support a lot of sponsors and um it, it was a really good event so that was back in september of 2019 and also you know we wanted to support the teachers by not only recognizing them through our award process but also we raised money um, to put into a fund which we would um, help sort of incoming um, teaching uh, students to, you know, um, afford their, ex um, their credentialing exams to teach here in Arizona. So um, we are going to try to do this again, but more as an online format uh, for the event. So uh, nomination form updates. Um, we do have the nomination forms. Um, I sent them to IT, um, which have an updated date. Um, we previously wanted to do it back in February, but as the youth camp, the winter youth camp came up, um, we decided to push it back and, you know, focus more on the camp. But now that the camp is done with, we decided to move forward with actually scheduling um, the event for September 18th of this year um, in honor of our first event back in um, you know September of 2019. So for our new dates, um, the new nominations deadline to submit your nomination form is for August 6th. Um, that's going to be a Friday, and it's going to be up on our ITCA uh, slash AIEA webpage. So if you go to the AIEA webpage, uh, the information should still be there from the event um, before, but also um, has additional information of what, of how the process is. So we are going to do a nomination, um, a nomination process. Um, you can send in your nomination form if you would like to request. Um, just send it, um, just send me an email and I can um, send you the nomination form uh, from myself to you. Um, we got an additional nomination this month, so I'm really happy that we got that in. So it's getting out there. And um, the one sort of uh, requirement that we have for the nomination is that it should not be um, a person that was awarded, um, I repeat, awarded from um, the year before. So 2019, we have all of our names um, still from the 2019 awardees. So um, that's basically the only requirement and um, this is open through all grade levels, you know, um, um, K through 12, but also above. So if you have any nominations, please let me know or just send in a nomination form or request it from my email and then I can get it back to you. And then for our event updates, um, like I said, we switched to September 18th. So we're tentatively planning as a virtual event. Um, 
you know, despite uh, COVID and everything, and despite, you know, getting vaccinated uh, for everyone, we still want to keep this um, a safe event as possible. And then another um, additional change is that we're going to do 11 awards this year. Um, we did 10 last year, but the 11th award is down at the bottom, the Resiliency Award on the right. And um, we are also um, still trying to expand our uh, committee. Um, right now for our committee meetings, uh, we just finalized our sponsorship letter. So we wanna be able to send it to potential sponsors. And we wanna make sure that we get this out in a timely manner so we can um, garner up support for our event. Um, last year's sponsors we got from ASU, U of A, and ITCA. So there, we are still very appreciative of all the funding that we got last year. And you know, we made it a really good event. Um, you know, in partnering with our university um, uh, sponsors, uh, they were able to um, bring and mingle with um, the um, university royalty. Um, indigenous royalty. So it was really good to have them there. And we also, um, that 2019 event, we also had um, our um, speaker who was, um, who was uh, Superintendent Hoffman. So that was really great to have her there as well. And then also for this upcoming um, 2021 event, we are having uh, Lynette Stant, the Teacher of the Year uh, 2020, uh, be our new speaker for this year, the keynote speaker. So we're really excited to host her. So we're going to actually start doing um, probably monthly or bi-monthly committee meetings now. Um, as the dates are coming up, we wanna make sure that we get our sponsorships, organize our event, including our auction and our raffle. We're gonna add a raffle this year and um, get nomination forms out there. Um, last year, we probably got about maybe 11 to 12 nominations and it was just enough to fill up the award, um, uh, the award categories. And in doing that, we actually um, sort of switched it up where we had uh, everyone sort of indicate two categories that, the, that their nomination um, person can be applied to. So we were able to fill in the gaps for those where some awards were you know, not able to be filled up, but we were able to do it um, for them to um, identify two categories that they were responsible for. So we were excited to do that. And so we're just hoping that we get some more nominations. And if you know someone, you know, just let us know. And um, if you want to join our committee meetings, you know, we're happy to invite you. Um, if you want more information about it, just contact me. My email is right there, jerry.thomas at itcaonline.com or um, that's my cell phone number uh, if you want to contact me for any questions. But that is about it for the award celebration. All right, are there any questions? And thank you, Jerry, for that update. We're very excited again that we're going to be hosting that this year. And uh, we're looking forward to having Lynette Stant, or Lynette Stant uh, be our keynote speaker. So, any questions? Okay, if there are none, let me see. I did forget to share out, um, I told um, ASU that I would share this out during the report, but I did forget one student opportunity that's coming up on, um, I believe it's this weekend. Let me take a look real quick. Yes, April 17th and the 18th. So this is a, um, the Arizona Indigenous Student Leadership Conference. And let me put that link in the chat here. Uh, let me get to it. This is the registration for your students. They are looking for high school and college students um, to participate. This is, again, the um, in collaboration with um, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. ASU in collaboration with the Alliance of Indigenous Peoples. And so they are putting together uh, this conference, uh, student leadership conference that is happening this weekend. So if you know of any students who may be interested, please share that link with them and forward that to them so that they may be able to register. Um, again, that is happening this weekend uh, with ASU and that's a student 
um, leadership opportunity. Before I forget to mention that, because I told her I would uh, put that out there for our meeting. But, all right, so if there are no questions for our educators celebration, um, as Jerry mentioned, we will be meeting uh, with our committee to uh, further um, advance what we're, how that's going to look and uh, give you details at our next meeting on um, what we're planning on doing. So with that, we'll move on in the agenda. Next on the um, next item is our student scholarship. Uh, as mentioned, we are very excited that we are able to provide this once again this year. And so I am going to again turn it over to Jerry for the update. Okay. So um, for our committee, um, what we would like is for more scholar um, scholarship committee members to sort of come forward and volunteer. Um, right now, uh, we are still planning to try to get the um, application out this month. If not this month, we'll probably release it in May, um, most likely in May. Um, right now, we are still sort of meeting. Um, I'll make sure to send out the weekly availability email so that we can figure out um, when everyone's available to um, meet for next week so we can continue our committee meetings. Um, this is going to be weekly committee meetings as usual and we're going to um, our biggest um, responsibilities are to update the AIEA scholarship application sort of like editing it and reorganizing the wording but also we want to finalize and release the application like again I said in April or May and then we're going to review the scoring chart um, this is going to be sort of a, um, probably take a little bit longer of a process this year. Um, I'll go into it a little bit later, but also we also want to review applications in August. Um, we do understand that people are busy, but if you would like to just review applications um, in your free time, uh, we invite that. We already have someone else on standby who's unable to do our weekly committee meetings, but who would like to review scholarship applications with us to make it easier. So uh, scholarship applications, if you would like to review it, a review in August, and we usually select awardees in August, so we notify them in August, and then we usually send out the, um, their funding uh, via check. We'll send that out either in August or September. So there is my information. Uh, if you would like to volunteer or request more information about the scholarship information, um, this is the ITCA slash AIEA scholarship webpage. Um, that's from last year where we had scholarship updates because we wanted to do uh, COVID precautions for that. Um, a lot of high school students were unable to get their transcripts and middle school students as well because during the summer they just closed down all the schools. So we allowed them um, leisure to, you know, op to optionally uh, submit their transcripts. So um, that was one big thing. And um, we do have the scholarship application from last year still up. Um, we still get inquiries about when the scholarship is to be released. So we're just still planning for the scholarship release and we wanna edit it first. And then we also have our AIEA um, scholarship frequent question and answer. So for that one, um, that's sort of a new concept that we came up with because a lot of students have general questions or um, questions about general information about the scholarship. So we put that up because we want to make sure that we get that information out. So frequent question and answers is uh, how do I apply? And then um, what are the scholarship categories? And then um, when, in, when the application is open and how would I be notified? And then we just go more into detail about what they should check off, including, so when we say um, select your student grade, we're asking for your grade from 2021 to 2022. So like your incoming year. So that's one of the big questions that students get hung up on. So we wanna make sure that we give them that information that uh, freely. So that's why we post it on our frequent questions and answers portion. So our last meeting was uh, this month on the second, and we're going to continue um, our meetings, like I said, but uh, our biggest discussion topics were the artwork option. So this is just an opportunity for students to create an artwork. And uh, this is just for extra, we're thinking about just doing it for extra points um, on their scholarship application. And then further on, um, we would like to ask them 
for their art donation, whether it's the original artwork, if we would like to make prints or replicate of their artwork so that they could still keep their original artwork. Um, this is just to help donate to the um, educators banquet or the award celebration. So that's what we would want to do. Our second um, discussion point was the middle school award. So we were thinking about shifting it from the three school, the three middle school awards to a one middle school award. Um, this is due to um, the lack of numbers that we see in the middle school applications. So last year we got about four and there was only two that were valid, meaning that um, they filled out their application wrong or they submitted it after the deadline. So, you know, unfortunately we only had uh, four applicants and then two valid applications. So we were, we had to pick one application because both of the students were actually um, applying to one category. So, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, because we have the three middle school awards and there's only a, just a few applicants, we, we usually just administer one award because students, you know, we're lacking middle school students that want to apply to our scholarship. So we're thinking of just having one middle school scholarship. Um, we were thinking about renaming it the seventh generation scholarship so that we can actually, um, um, this would help with our time and our organization to, um, to administer the scholarship. So we, uh, that's what one of our discussion points was. And then our second one was changing the award amounts. So, in, so having the three middle school awards um, I think they were about $100 each. So in, in not administering the other two middle school awards, we still had to keep the money. So if we decided to A, get rid of um, the other two middle school awards and just have the one, we could still give out the $100 while we can rearrange the amounts for the other two awards or the other awards for the college uh, the college students. So what we wanted to do was change the award amounts for those college students, because we know that college students, they're the bigger portion. We got like 44 applications last year uh, from college and university students applying to our scholarship. And we wanted to see if we could put that $100 or uh, the other, the $200 altogether back to the three scholarship applicants, uh, the scholar, uh, the college or university scholarship award amounts. So um, we were just thinking we could do that instead. So we're still discussing that. And then also, you know, every year we um, think about a new theme that we want to do for our um, for our scholarship. So we don't have students, you know, submitting the same thing or uh, copying and pasting their um, scholarship essay. So our new theme is still being continued for discussion. And this is because we're also trying to implement the artwork option so that it could be more applicable to the theme. So that's what we're still discussing. And um, like I said, if you wanna volunteer and add your thoughts about the theme or the award amounts or the artwork option, you know, just let us know. And then also, like I said, we're going to continue to have our committee meetings weekly. Um, like uh, also I will send out the availability email so the members can have, um, so we can all have an idea and I can schedule the meeting on an appropriate day. But um, does anyone have any questions so far about the scholarship? Okay, if not, um, just uh, contact me and just let me know if you have any questions or want more information and we can move on to the next, um, next item on the agenda. Thank you, Jerry. Again, um, we're very excited. We're able to provide that again this year, and we will get that information out as soon as it becomes available for the release date. So moving on, we have our new business, which is the uh, first item under new business is our webinar series. Um, this is something we started last year that we're very excited that we're able to continue into this year. Um, this year, um, we're, we're still continuing to hold it on a virtual platform. And so it's been really ex um, exciting. Last year, we had a lot of participation and um, we were able to answer a lot of questions from students and about um, different topics that we elaborated on during each session. 
And so we're excited that we're able to bring this back again this year. Um, however, we did include one extra sessions that we're going to be doing. So one is going to be specifically geared toward education. And the second one is geared toward the cultural um, uh, tra uh, traditional arts and crafts type sessions that we're going to be providing. And so I am going to again turn it over to Jerry to provide the update on what we are planning for this year. Yes, so for our upcoming uh, educational webinar series, um, we're focusing on the AIEA scholarship application and in general, uh, um, preparing for scholarship applications processes. So what we're doing right now is we're still seeking presenters for related topics. So that includes, we want to do these topics, especially, so these sessions for the webinars, um, writing a personal statement, uh, writing a resume slash cover letter, and then volunteers and cultural opportunities for native students. And also um, just in general, if you'd like to join our webinar series um, um, group, uh, it's not really committee just yet, but we want to do more outreach to local and national organizations. Um, that's our next biggest step um, to help connect with those people at those uh, organizations because we need these presenters uh, during the summer as our AIEA students are applying for the scholarship. So, you know, writing a personal statement, resume building, and then volunteer and cultural opportunities. You know, some of these opportunities, you know, students might not even have. We wanna make sure that we provide them guidance, especially our middle school and high school students or who are probably, you know, this is their first time applying to a scholarship and we wanna give them tips and tricks and just have that skill of, you know, putting together and um, um, basically, um, honing in their skill of how to present themselves in a professional manner uh, to, you know, gain more opportunity in the future. So um, that's our biggest step. And um, we're still going to do our um, AIEA scholarship uh, question and answers portion um, or our webinar. So we're hoping to do that towards the end or towards the middle of, you know, um, between these topics of writing a personal statement, resume and cover letter, and then opportunities for Native students. So we're hoping to do that all that together so we can have that up on our AIEA YouTube channel. So the students, if they have any questions about our scholarship still, we can actually refer them to the AIEA um, YouTube channel so that they can get those tools that are necessary to help, you know, apply to our scholarship. But our scholarship is out there. Um, I do get inquiries about the scholarship application when it's coming out because it usually comes out in April. Um, so we're really excited to, you know, help reorganize the scholarship and then also continue our webinar series. So um, we also do have uh, our last educational webinar. I believe it was the uh, 2021, no, the 20, yeah, 2021, 2022 uh, FAFSA. So we did a walkthrough back in November. Um, you know, our uh, speaker from uh, South Mountain Community College was gracious enough to um, um, spend time with us to go through the FAFSA application process. And we're really glad to have her. And uh, she also applied to our AIEA scholarship. So she was very familiar with our scholarship and understood the purpose of our webinar series. So, you know, we're excited to host her. So um, next up is our cultural webinar series. Um, our cultural webinar series, we want to focus on virtual family arts and crafts that are easy for um, parents and students to do. So this is also a highlight point where we want to um, um, have them have the step-by-step -step instructions and have presenters volunteer to present and do or teach their art and highlight the cultural significance of, you know, their skill that they have. So we want to make sure that um, we get uh, suitable presenters and also have, uh, we do, um, record the session as well. And we put that up on our YouTube channel too. So, and also we have this, so we can have the uh, opportunity to ask for donations uh, to the educators banquet again, um, as our raffle, as our items for auction. So uh, 
we're still planning to do that as well. Um, our last um, cultural webinar session was the baby ribbon skirt making. That's up on our YouTube channel as well. I was the one that helped taught that. And um, like I said, it was, it was our first uh, cultural webinar. So we didn't get a lot of people. It was like two people, but um, we still did our ribbon skirt making and um, mine turned out really nice. So I still like it. It's like baby size. So I'll probably give it away. <laughs> so, but our next um, session is going to be our tubular beading and I'm going to go forward to provide a little bit more information about that. So this is our flyer that we have out. Um, this time we were, we we're going to do a registration uh, process. So if you would like to register, um, please email me and I'll send out um, the Zoom registration link and um, we also have the opportunity, this is going to be next Thursday, the 22nd, um, our AIEA, um, um, sorry, um, Esther, she's going to present actually the tubular beading webinar. So we're really excited for her to do that. And she's even um, volunteering to provide free beading materials, you know, free, a free beading package so that you can do this webinar. So um, if you would like that package um, to do the beading webinar on Thursday, um, we're trying to get our contact information uh, from the Zoom links. Uh, we already have uh, six or seven people so far that registered. And yes, they want that free uh, beading supplies. So um, they have our info. Uh, they have that information, the link, everything um, already, and we're already getting our packages together um, to mail out to everyone. So we're really excited. We're getting people from Tucson, people from Flagstaff that are interested in doing their beading webinar. So if you'd like free beading materials and would like to attend this free webinar, um, you know, uh, just uh, shoot me an email and then we'll be excited to uh, send that information to you. So. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? Sherry, would it be all right to share that link in the chat? Um, yes, I don't have it. I got it here. I just okay. wanted to make sure it'd be okay. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Yeah, so if you just um, follow that link, it's just going to ask you some general information. Um, and then, you know, your uh, phone number and then uh, that's just in your email. That's just in case, you know, we get a hiccup with mailing. But um, if you, we just asked that general question at the bottom, if you would like free, um, if you would like uh, free beading materials, and then, um, you know, just provide us your um, shipping information or your mailing address, and then we can send it to you. Hey, Jerry, this is mm -hmm. Esther. Can I show them an example real quick? Yes. All right, fabulous. Hi, everybody. So I hope you can join me. Um, we'll be teaching how to do um, the total tubular beading. <laughs> Wanted to show you an example real quick. Uh, this is an actual hairpin uh, hair stick, I guess. And uh, there's some of the beading. It goes around in a circle with the tail ends. And uh, this is also just in time for graduation as well. Um, Mesa Public Schools Native Program. Um, gives out the feathers to put on their graduation cap. So we'll be beading these at, as well. So this can be used to bead on the feathers, um, on hair ties, on pencils or pens, whatever you see where you would like to do that at. So um, I hope you can join me. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Register with Jerry and on that link. And sooner the better so I can get you those supplies. All right, thank you. Thank you, Esther. So um, we'll be moving on next to our next item. Okay, so for our um, protecting our land summer youth camp. So um, just some follow-up items from our winter youth camp. Uh, that's the uh, flyer for our winter youth camp that we had 
um, Monday and Tuesday, December 28th and 29th of last year. Um, the reason why we chose those dates was because it was more it was more open to the students to attend during their um, during their winter break. So um, we're still following up with them. Um, right now we're still uh, processing payments to our volunteers and processing registration um, from our attendees. So um, the payments for our volunteers, we've kind of already went through that for the um, for the treasurer's report. Um, all that information was already sent out to Travis. So, um, and I think he's already following up with some of our college mentors that received our, um, our um, compensation for their work. So we had three uh, college mentors. We had um, a few uh, speakers, um, elders that were able to participate. And uh, surprisingly, some of them, they didn't want compensation or also they uh, were already compensated by their program. So, um, you know, they were either weren't allowed or they were um, already compensated uh, for their time at the camp um, by their organization. So, you know, we're just really excited to host them. And um, now moving on to our summer youth camp. Um, we are still doing a call for uh, camp um, committee members. The big reason is that um, we want those to out, uh, do outreach for our college and university partners or actually you know, um, help uh, garner up contacts for college and university partners here in Arizona. So usually it just kind of turned out this way. We didn't really um, um, plan it too much about it, but it just sort of ends up being that college and university partners, um, they usually volunteer to um, host our camp. So our first camp was back in 2007, I believe. Um, that was in July. And um, we, um, University of Arizona donated their 4-H um, uh, camp um, a campsite to us to uh, host our camp. So we were excited to um, work with the uh, University of Arizona. But then as time went on, um, a few years back, we did our NAU camp. So that was back at the NAU campus where they have actually have a campsite um, on their camp as one of their campuses. So um, they hosted um, our camp and those are sort of the pictures right there from NAU. And, you know, they were really gracious to host, host us that year. And we were just excited to make those connections with the college and the universities around them. And then, um, you know, we still want help with organizing the virtual youth camp. So uh, we want to do weekly meetings again and then coordinate presenters and volunteers. Um, you know, our volunteers usually come from um, U of A, um, here from AIEA, ITCA, and sorry, and then also um, we want to help coordinate student packages. So student packages, because it's an um, online camp, we want to make sure that they have those um, camp supplies before the camp starts. So um, we still are sending out some of our leftover packages from our camp before. Um, during our winter camp, um, some students actually registered the day before the camp started. So we're still getting out those uh, student packages to those students. and. Um, we're still gonna host our summer youth camp this year. So we're still planning on it. Um, if you would like more information about the camp or if you would like to you know, submit contact information right now, um, we're um, open to partnering with any and all colleges. Um, if, you know, usually we, um, they donate uh, like presenters time, uh, presenters knowledge or um, um, supplies that, uh, for activities for the students. Um, you know, we just want to make those uh, contacts and those connections with the, uh, with the organizations. But um, if you have any of that or would just like more information, uh, just let me know. Or if you have any questions about the camp, just let me know. But are there any questions so far? If not, I think we can go forward 
the next just item. Very quickly, Jerry, if you can mm -hmm. go back just to the um, summer camp or our youth camps. Um, we we started this, as Jerry mentioned, in 2017. So every year since 2017, we've held a summer youth camp um, with the exception of last year, as she mentioned, um, we decided to hold our first winter camp. And that was the first time we went virtual with that. But um, as Jerry, you know, talked about it, what we're looking at for those of us who have been in um, the initial meeting for the uh, committee is that we're going to be focusing on the water and the water issues that are taking place within our state of Arizona. As you're well aware, we um, water is very scarce for uh, our communities within the state of Arizona. So we wanted to um, help and enlighten that knowledge um, from a traditional cultural viewpoint um, for this summer um, for the summer camp this year. And so we're very excited with that. And the tentative dates that we're looking at for that are July 25th through the 29th. So those are just um, tentative dates that we suggested. That's usually around the time we held our summer camp. So we kind of would like to keep it around that, that time, depending if there's any other conflicts with that. But um, we just wanted you to be aware of uh, that information as well. And so if again, if you have any questions, please reach out to Jerry uh, for those questions and um, she can uh, provide answers for those. Um, were, were there any questions or comments about that? Hi, um, excuse me. Hi, um, I had a, a just a comment, you know, uh, on what you just mentioned about um, uh, the basis being on, on the water and the impacts um, from a traditional standpoint. And one of the things I wanted to mention was, um, you know, if you're not familiar with um, Apache Stronghold and uh, Protect Oak Flat, um, you know, this initiative. Um, that's happening right now in uh, just above Superior, Arizona, which is about an hour and a half away from Phoenix. Um, uh, the Apache Stronghold has been protecting Oak Flat uh, from the foreign mining company Resolution Copper, which is a subsidiary of Rio Tinto um, and uh, BHP. Um, but the, the reason why I mention it is when you talk about water and um, you know the scarcity, the fact that Phoenix is in the desert, um, and that all the water is rerouted to the city. Um, the copper, uh, uh, Resolution Copper, um, if they are able to mine the underwater uh, copper from the land, um, they have found the largest uh, copper ore body underneath the earth uh, right there at uh, Apache Leap, and they plan to um, extract it. And when they do that, it takes away the natural um, cleansing properties that the land provides for the water. And um, they're going to use the, the aquifers, um, the clean water to um, uh, for the mine. And then they plan to clean it at a water treatment facility, which is just um, west of uh, District 7 in Gila River. So all of these things impact the, the future water um, availability and quality within the Phoenix metropolitan area. So it's really important to just have that aspect. Um, and I, my comment when you mentioned water. Thank you, Ahit. Thank you, Lynn. That's very important. And that some of the issues did, uh, that you just mentioned did come up in our conversation um, with those of us who were in the initial committee meeting. Um, again, if anybody is interested in being a part of the committee, please reach out to Jerry. We uh, would greatly appreciate your input on how we would like to see the summer camp go. So thank you for that, Lynn. Any other comments or questions? All right, if there are none, then Jerry, we can move on in the agenda. And next on our list is our um, update from the Office of Indian Education with um, the state of Arizona. Um, unfortunately, Sami had to leave and so she did provide me some information for um, the update. And usually I um, ask our uh, co-secretary, Lenann Yazi, to uh, provide the update as she is the chair for our Indian Education Advisory Council. But she is tied up with some office duties right now. And so um, I get that pleasure of uh, providing the information. So some of the things that um, Sami did want to mention and to um, provide to you. She did drop all that in the chat box. 
And so um, I'm trying to pull this really quick. Okay, so she did want to um, let everybody know that ADE um, with the policy specialist update, which is her position, um, she is working with the ADE to address questions of state assessments and in-person construction. Uh, she is. She did state there is a conflict with one tribe having legislation versus public health order that determines students are to remain and virtual only. The governor's executive order specifies that the Arizona Department of Human Services via a public health order has the ultimate authority to close a school due to a significant outbreak of COVID-19. Uh, by state executive order, uh, that requires a return to in-person instruction. Um, the United States Department of Education has not issued any blanket waivers for state assessments. Um, ADE as implementer of the executive order and federal requirements. Um, they are encouraging tribes to reach out to the governor's office as a tribal sovereign body. ADE is not able to interpret the law in favor of a tribal request. So they are asking that all those tribes, um, if, if you could please exercise your sovereignty in relation to this particular issue. The best opportunity for a tribe is to engage in government to government relationships that allow for directly addressing concerns. So um, with this issue, um, you know, she highly recommends that the tribes themselves uh, ex exercise that government to government relationship in order to, for the safety of the students that um, if, if it's a requirement for them to return back to in-person learning. Uh, as far as data sharing, potential policy yeah. development for the next year of the legislator session 2022. There is potential policy development for that. Um, Navajo Nation has an MOA with ADE. Uh, the current concerns from the tribes are data for students is not required to be populated by tribal affiliation. When seeking information, the reports are broadly defined as Native American, American Indian. Um, this is an ongoing challenge that we have within our school district um, with any of our data. A lot of our students um, that are that we have on our list, for instance, within our district, um, they are categorized as um, if they are of several different ethnicities. Uh, one of the ethnicities that usually gets our students is the Hispanic population, and so the um, or the Latino population. And so a lot of our students aren't characterized as American Indian whenever data reports do come back to our district. And so we have to manually go in and pull those students that we know are of American Indian descent and Native American so we can include that data within those reports. So I can see that concern is still an ongoing challenge for a lot of our um, schools and for our students. Uh, missing students, Superintendent Hoffman is supporting a campaign to support re-engaging students with schools. They are not yet ready for sharing, but once they have details, they will report on that. Again, this is just going back to the data that's um, compiled for um, the students that are attending our schools within the state of Arizona, categorized as American Indian. Um, April 19th is the next ADE OIE policy and program updates for indigenous stakeholders that will take place this coming um, week. The highlight will be OIE strategic planning progress with a report from tribal grant specialists and an update on the current alloc allocation of the 1 million budget. And there is a question, can AIE submit a letter or white paper to the governor in support of tribal educational sovereignty? Absolutely. Um, I think that is something that uh, AIEA uh, has always tried to support our students in any capacity as far as any tribal um, relation for in, in ensuring that our students' voices are heard and from a tribal cultural perspective. And so this is definitely something that we will bring before our executive committee and share out among our membership um, for when uh, we can make that happen. So thank you, Melody, for providing that question. And so those, that's a few of the updates. I actually was out of state on travel, so I did not attend this last meeting. But those of, we do have several who are on the call with us today. 
If you would like to share out anything further, please feel free to. And so I'm going to allow um, those, Esther, Paul, or Melody, if you would like to share out some information from that particular meeting, please feel free to do so. Kimberly, this is Linnean. Sorry, I've been off and on, so I don't know if you covered this in your president's report, but um, the House Bill 2705 regarding Native regalia that that passed um, the Senate yesterday and it's in the was sent to the governor. So apologize, apologies if you've already covered that, um, but, but that was the only additional thing. Thank you, Linnean. And, and yes, that was one of the first things we highlighted and everybody was very happy. <laughs> so thank you. Paul. Awesome. <laughs> I have a, a couple of things, uh, Paul, with the Career Success Dropout Program. Um, so our, uh, your reservation sisters are uh, struggling with this reopening. Kids that haven't been in school in over a year or kids that attend every day. I mean, it is really that much difference and everything in between. Uh, and your brothers too. So I would just say I've been up, some are closed still and yet down here in the in the valley or in tucson people are walking around like they never wore a mask in their life and so the reintegration back to whatever the normal was or the normal's gonna be is being felt by those who are uh not even yet doing it they feel it but they can't get their communities there because there's tribal orders to shut so just reach out Hey, how you doing? Because as hard as it is for us to reintegrate, imagine if you're a little bit remote. And so that's just a, a request uh, for our friends on the way out. So that's number one. Number two, the data piece. We've talked about this previously, and this is for the university partners. We need to get a handle on native data yesterday. AI informs itself based on these uh, data points, demographics, and what we learned about a year ago or two years ago, and it's been forever, but it, it's now more efficient. Things like what advertisements you get on your phone for car loans depend on your demographics to some extent, depending on how enriched their data sourcing is. If, if the culture, if it's wrong 100 years ago, and that just compounded over a hundred years, it can really harm the, the future of a community if it's not properly represented in the data set. So I hope I'm being clear that when they say American Indian or, or Alaska Native means something, it, it's not just federal funding now, and it's, it's not just business, what, what auto loans they get, which dealerships they are approached by, it's the identity of the children. So this is a huge thing and, and we need the big brains on it. So uh, those are my thoughts. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Paul. Always appreciate your input. Uh, Melody, did you have anything you wanted to add? Thanks for calling me out there, Cam. I was keeping a low profile today. Um, I think that uh, <laughs> what um, something that I, the Indian Education Advisory Council, for those of you, especially you higher ed folks, that council is an advisory to the Arizona Department of Education. So it's, it does, OIE is there, but other departments are there too as well. So it's kind of an interesting situation and we're really, really lucky to have Lynn Ann be the chair. Um, right now, they're taking um, student applicants, which is a really exciting thing to happen. There were seven applications submitted, which is a lot less than in the past. And so I'm not sure what happened there because it's, it's for college students and high school students. But in any case, there's seven, so we'll get more. Um, I think to me, that's the most exciting thing going on right now is students and the opportunity to mentor those students which I was very fortunate last year, I was assigned somebody I didn't know, and they've just been an amazing human being and a real joy to work with. Um, and then it's done. <laughs> 71 pages later, 
the um, Office of Indian Education has a strategic plan. Yes, I deserve that emoji, Paul. Yes, it was at 95 pages, you guys see. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt as usual. Yay, Melody. Way to go. That is outstanding. Bravo, bravo. I think um I think what's really important for those of you who did participate in the different planning sessions is we centered um, community voice first and foremost throughout this plan. It does not look like other strategic plans. The actual strategic planning with the short-term, long-term, midterm goals, that's like a crunched like seven pages in the middle of it. Um, but you can really take a look at what parents and caretakers had to say. Students, high school students, college students had to say. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to separate data between um, parents who were in reservation schools versus parents who are in public schools. So it's really like a rich, rich, rich document. And I think, um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, kind of go like, Kim, if you need to. Um, I think the thing that really stood out for me in this plan was the deep, deep need for the Office of Indian Education to be more responsive to parents. Like that was huge every single stakeholder groups. And I gotta tell you, it kind of blew my mind with the students, but the students were talking about services they wanted for their parents. And so, I mean, it's just like across the board, parents asked for it. Our tribal leaders, we had four tribal leaders who came in and spent three and a half hours with us. So, you know, we really centered and honored their voices including the Indian Education Advisory Council. I used as many quotations as possible to directly hear from um, people themselves. And so I think that, um, I think those are my big giant takeaways. That's my update. Yes, thank you and um, kudos to the Indigenous Strategies Group and team for creating this document. It is, as Melody mentioned, a working document that um, we should all uh, take a look at. I highly encourage everybody to take a look at it and to see what the um, strategic plan is for this office. Um, there was a lot of input, as everybody has mentioned, uh, to, to create this and to pull it all together. It is a lot of work, so thank you, Melody, and your team for pulling this all together for us. I did drop that in the uh, chat box. Um, if you click on the link, that is the Office of Indian Education website. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the strategic plan link and then the actual survey um, underneath that. If you get a chance, I encourage you to please complete that survey so that we can have that data uh, provided to them for um, how the strategic plan is. And so again, thank you everybody for um, pulling together. This was a lot of work and it's been an ongoing process since last year and it's exciting to see it actually in action and so very exciting things happening with the Office of Indian Education. So uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, if there are none that we can move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the National Indian Education Association update. And um, I just wanna say, welcome Joaquin. It's really great to see you again. Um, it's been several years since I've actually seen you um, in person uh, many years, but we're very excited that you're a part of us um, for today's meeting and we welcome you uh, with open arms. And so if you have, um, a chance, can you please provide an update? And I'm actually looking on the uh, um, chat and thing. So um, again, welcome Joaquin. And so right now I am going to turn it over to you to provide the uh, National Indian Education Association update. Yeah, so um, hello everybody. Um, three main things that I just wanted to update you on. First is just my um, role at NIEA. Um, this position, I am the Tribal State Policy Associate. Uh, this was a position that started up with the um, passage of the ESSA and the tribal consultation that was going on with states at the time. Um, 
the position was really meant to help develop resources and tools around ESSA. Um, and then NIEA kind of lost the ability to support this position. And so I'm just newly hired. We're really starting to get this position started up again. Um, and a lot of what I'm going to be doing is um, reaching out to um, the, all of the state-based Indian education associations like AIEA and um, the rest around the US, as well as doing a lot of uh, policy analysis for each of the states just to get uh, NIEA really back into the groove of knowing what's going on with each of these states and be able to capture all of the um, legislative, uh, everything that's moving legislatively on the state level. So um, I am part of the legislative team. There is a program side of things. Um, so I specifically deal with policy and legislation. However, I am a what part of the field team at NIEA. As I mentioned earlier, I am based out here in Tempe, Arizona. So um, you, you will be seeing a lot of me in the state. I do intend to uh, attend the monthly AIEA meetings to be able to report out and also just to hear a lot of the um, discussion that's going on on the on the ground because as NIEA starts to grow, we really are trying to uh, make sure that we stay connected with all of our allies and partner associations around the country and also making sure we're getting that feedback from a lot of the um, a lot of the local um, presence and everything that you're seeing on the ground. Um, so currently I am the only um, tribal state person at NIEA. We, we all essentially do do tribal state work, but I'm the one who's really focusing on it. Um, so I am right now really in the process of making connections and um, developing a really long-term framework for what this position is going to do. So that's what I'm, that's kind of my day-to-day -day, um, right now. And a lot of that work is just doing the landscape analysis of all these um, various states. Uh, Arizona is one of the ones I'm here. So it's one of the ones I'm very familiar with. Um, so um, I look forward to working with all of you. Please um, contact me. I'll go ahead and drop my uh, email in the chat when, once I'm done. Um, so if anybody wants to just connect one-on-one, -on -one, then um, just send me an email and we can figure out a time, whether it's a phone call or a video call, um, that we can get together and just, um, I can introduce myself more formally. So that's um, who I am and why you, you'll probably be seeing me around a lot more. Um, the kind of big things that are happening around uh, NIE right now, NIEA, is the, uh, we're going to start opening um, for resolution submissions. So for those of you who uh, may not know exactly what that is, NIEA, we um, respond to our membership and our membership is able to drive exactly what we do, our national priorities in Indian education through a formal resolution proce process brought forward by NIEA membership. And if you're not a member of NIEA, you can still get involved. All you would need to do is find somebody who is a member and just work with them to have them elevate that resolution and submit it to NIEA. So um, I'm, I don't handle the membership side of things. So I'm not exactly sure um, if AIEA has any members. I believe they do. Um, so you would just need to work with that um, identify that person or people and be able to submit that resolution through them. And then there is an entire process. So I'll also give you a link to um, our resolution site as well. So we're, we're going to start opening up um, submissions in May, and then submissions will be open until August 21st, which will lead us into our um, annual convention, which is going to be in October 13th through the 16th in Omaha, Nebraska. Currently, we are moving forward with having a physical um, convention. We are still monitoring the situation with the pandemic, um, and we will have some um, options available for being able to attend remotely at this time. Um, so um, the other uh, major thing that I wanted to bring up is the deadline for presentations. It's actually today. So if you were, if you did want to present at the annual convention, our deadline is today. I'll go ahead and drop a link to that as well in the chat um, once I'm done. So um, it would, you would have to put something together very quickly. Um, I 
uh, in case there are, is an extension, I can get in contact with um, AIEA to let you know there is an extension as well. Um, so those are kind of the big things that are happening. And as my position grows and I get more familiar with everything that's going on in NIEA and around the US, I can be able to um, reach back out and let you know what our priorities are, uh, what we're doing on the federal level, and then um, give you some updates on Indian education that just the landscape, what are all the other states doing? And I know AIEA um, through their Facebook sent out some communications on the uh, what's going on in North Dakota with the passage of uh, um, the Indian Education for All legislation that's really starting to come up around the country. So um, again, I'll go ahead and put my all this information into the chat. So feel free to reach out with me to me individually if you want to set up any meetings. Um, I am happy to just get in contact and be able to build relationships on the ground here in Arizona. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Joaquin. And, and again, we are so happy that um, you're in that position. Uh, we've worked with you uh, before, so we're very excited to have you on board with us again. And as always, we welcome you and thank you for joining us at today's meeting and look forward to having you at our future meetings. And so um, we always try and keep our membership and community updated as much as we can. We know there's a lot of information out there. Um, so if you if you haven't noticed, I do want to make mention, um, Joaquin didn't mention our Facebook social media site, but on your agendas that were that was sent out for this meeting for today, at the very top we have, which will be on every agenda from this point moving forward, um, is our information and our contact information that Jerry has just put up um, on the screen here. So we do have our website, which is housed under the Intertribal Council of Arizona under the programs portion of it. So that's a direct link to our AIEA website. Um, we also have our email on there. Um, we also have our YouTube channel. If you haven't been to our YouTube channel, please share it widely <laughs> so we can get those views coming in on the great and exciting things that we're doing with AIEA. And finally, we have our Facebook um, page that that's our social media where we try and share out a lot of information uh, that about Indian education and about Native issues in particular. And so uh, please uh, go, go and visit for updates and information on Indian education within the state of Arizona as well as across Indian country. Um, these issues are very important that may or may not have a direct impact on us, but it's affecting a lot of our Native students. And so we try and keep that information updated, not only for our students, but for the communities as well. And so again, um, that's our information. It is listed on your agenda for today and will be in the future um, sessions that we have. And again, Joaquin just dropped his information down in the chat. So please pull that so that you can have his direct contact information as well. And so are there any questions while we have Joaquin with us? about um, the National Indian Education Update. Okay, if there are none, again, thank you, Joaquin, for that um, information. We look forward to the updates in the future meetings. So if there are no questions, we'll move on to our final um, well, to one of the next to the final items on our agenda, which is our program share outs. And so this is a time where we allow those who are on the call. We have a lot of, as mentioned, a lot of, a lot of things happening, a lot of events going on across um, Indian education country. And so this is the opportunity for you to share out um, your uh, conferences or events that you are having and upcoming um, that are upcoming. So I'm allow this time and turn it over to whoever would like to start us out. I do want to make mention um, with uh, one second really quick. I do see you, hold on just a second. Before I forget, um, Esther Nystrom, who is our vice president had to take off um, to help with her um, daughter. So I am going to, she did ask if we could share this out with um, the membership. I'm trying to find it here. 
she works with the Mesa Public Schools. And so she just wanted us to share out that uh, her, the Mesa Public Schools is searching for a qualified candidate to teach the Navajo language and assist in building a strong Navajo program. I will drop the flyer in the chat box that they are searching for somebody to teach the Navajo language. So if you know of anybody or if you're qualified to do that, please reach out to Esther. Again, I'll drop that flyer, excuse me, in the chat box. And um, Melody, go ahead because I did see your hand. You can't miss it. <laughs> So hello everyone. It is that special time of year again. I was considering canceling the gathering of educators, which is our annual professional development conference we have in Tucson, although people from throughout the state are welcome and do attend. This year we're doing it online and it's just it's free. We've created something entirely different where it's going to be much more relational and really a celebration of teachers. In fact, the first 20 registrants are getting a free gift in, in the mail after attending. So we're really trying to show some respect and kindness to all of you out there. So please feel free to share the flyer. It has the link to register. Um, on a special note, since we did talk about the strategic plan just a, a teeny bit, um, there's going to be a special session facilitated by Serena Dennett Sosi from the Office of Indian Ed. And she's going to be asking educators directly about what keeps you in your job and what can we do, what can Office of Indian Ed do to keep you at your job, so retaining, but also recruiting more Indigenous educators. So it's going to be kind of a time you'll be heard. And you'll be heard by somebody who can put it into action and put some money behind it. So. I kind of love that. So gathering of educators, special gift to indigenous educators this year. I can, I can go next. Uh, it was Zani. Um, I just have a quick update with our EPA funded Tribal Voices program with the Youth Conference. The date has changed, like we said earlier, to May 1st. It'll be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, it won't change again. That's the date we're going with. Uh, just a little bit about it. It does require you to register. Um, it's a quick registration, and, um, and then we'll send out the Zoom link after there's a registration. Uh, so Zani, it looks like you put the flyer in the chat. So if if all of you want to send it out to your networks and Zani, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, so I am one of the coordinators working on this event and I'm really excited about it. Um, thank you, Melody. Uh, so the theme of this youth conference is going to be Indigenous food sovereignty and environmental sustainability. And this theme is very um, important and meaningful to us because we actually put out a widespread youth uh, survey to hear back from the youth about what topics they were interested in around environmental health or environmental issues. And these were the top topics that were chosen. Um, so we have a couple of really amazing speakers identified already. Um, for example, the, someone from the Ajo Center for Sustainable Agriculture um, a teacher from Baba Kiri High School, um, as well as someone from the Healthy Autumn Promotion Program. So a lot of really great speakers. It's going to be a really good event. There's opportunities for prizes. Um, so yeah, it's open to high school and college students um, and their families. So please join us if you can. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, Leanne Horse. Um, I, I wanted to um, introduce um, Taylor Susan. I've asked her to come to this meeting today. Um, her and Kayleen are, um, they work within Native Health. Uh, Taylor is the Youth Resiliency Specialist. And I've also asked uh, Kayleen Wilson uh, become a member as well. And she's our Tribal Practices Coordinator. And um, I, I'm going to turn it over to Taylor. She can tell you what she does there uh, within the uh, metropolitan area. Thank you. 
So I'll go to Ed. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me join your call today. There was so much um, amazing information that all of you provided. But I'm Taylor. I'm the Youth Resiliency Specialist at Native Health. And we work um, directly with youth and, well, we try to, but we have many um, activities planned out. We have a youth council that we've started. We also have monthly cultural activities. So if you are free next week, Thursday, we do have um, a Navajo singing lesson with Kansas Begay, who's a former Miss Indian World. Um, we also have talking circles that we host for youth um, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. And our job um, at Native Health under the Youth Resiliency Program is to provide um, positive mental health through ancestral teachings and also um, incorporate um, techniques to provide suicide prevention um, strategies. So that is really what I enjoy doing. I really like it. And um, if any of you are in more interested in regards to the activities that we do have, um, we have a ton coming up this year, especially the Resilient Indigenous Youth Fest, um, baby moccasin making classes or ribbon skirt making class that will be hosted within the coming months. Um, so we hope to see you guys involved and see you there. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, email me and I'll provide that in the chat right now, okay? So thank you again and um, stay safe. Taylor, if there's a website also, can you include that in the drop information? Um, yeah, the website, um, usually kind of all of our announcements are on the Native Health Facebook page. Um, but let me go ahead and give you the website. But I'll provide all of that to you, the social media pages. Thank you. Anybody else? Kimberly, can I share a couple things? Absolutely, John. Hi, everyone. Um, I recently participated or was part of a virtual conference, NASH, uh, the NASAI Conference, uh, Na Native American Student Advocacy Institute. It's primarily focused on higher education. And uh, a couple things came out of that uh, that might, might be relevant to all of you. Uh, one of the speakers was Julian Guerrero. He's the, uh, I'm, I'm not sure of his exact, exact, exact title, but he's at the U.S. Office of Indian Ed in, in Washington, D.C. I know Kimberly has mentioned him before. And he talked about grants coming up, uh, uh, upcoming grants possibly for professional development, uh, different types of technical assistance grants possibly, just to, for people to be aware of. I can, I don't have those right at my fingertips, that, but I can share that. Uh, I can get that to, some, to Kimberly or, or, or uh, uh, Jerry or somebody, and we can make sure that that's published in the minutes. But that's something to be aware of for, for educators, certainly, and districts. And then uh, another thing, uh, there were quite a, few different presenters and I wasn't able to attend or participate the whole time but one of them was Colin Ben I don't know if anybody knows him but he's at ASU and he talked about um, what was the exact title I think it was culturally responsive let me see is is uh, culturally responsive schooling he might be somebody, I know Kimberly, you have talked about having presenters or speakers. He might be somebody to reach out to, uh, to talk about culturally responsive schooling, just to give us more insight, to have people uh, really, really kind of, uh, I think it looks really at the historical context, different cultural issues to really try to include uh, the native indigenous perspective uh, on how we're educating our students. And so he might be, a, you know, a local person who could uh, speak to us at some point, possibly. Those are my main two announcements. Thank you, John. And uh, Julian is the director of the Office of Indian Education at Washington, D.C., um, he just newly came on board, and so we're very excited. Um, he's, he's 
very well educated on how to make the programs work. And those of us who work with the Title VI uh, program have already seen those changes, positive changes come about. So I'm a great person to be in that position. And also um, in mention for um, Colin, um, he's, he's, he's great. I know that he's worked with ASU and um, a lot of the youth in the area. And so we would be honored to have him come on board to do a presentation for us as well. So we'll definitely keep him in mind also, especially for those who are involved with uh, the STEM careers. So thank you, John. Um, is there any other updates or program share outs that anybody would like to provide? Hi, Kim. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you. Hope you're all doing well and safe on the other side of the screen. Sorry, I hopped off to another meeting. I'm Enrique K. Salt. I'm the program coordinator and language specialist for the Indigenous Teacher Education Project at the College of Education at the University of Arizona. So currently our aim is to increase the teacher shortage, indigenous teacher shortage within Arizona. So our aim is to um, have those who have either their AA, AJEC, getting them into the program. So they are transfer students and they complete their last two years. And when they graduate, they will graduate with their elementary teaching certification with a focus on indigenous education and then funding to cover will be through Arizona Teacher Academy that covers full tuition and mandatory fees. So just really quick, I'm going to share a flyer here. Hopefully, if you have, hopefully all of you seen this. Um, if not, then I'm not doing my job. If not, let me know, reach out to me, send me your email. I'm going to put my email in the chat. We have our next application window opening in May. So it'll be May 10th through the 21st. The first step is to always submit unofficial transcripts to our academic advisor, Sarah Nepper, or you may reach out to me directly. So we have that event there coming up to as well. Um, and our soon to be coming event is in June here, Mobilizing Decolonial Praxis. This is our inaugural conference and we are going to be having Dr. Grande, Winona LaDuc, Dr. Lee and Dr. Django Paris. And a lot of these individuals, they really inform our praxis, pedagogy and ways of studying to integrate our indigenous languages, culture, traditions back into our curriculum, our classrooms, our lesson planning so that we can really reach our kiddos and create rel um, relative content um, and relatable content. So that's all I have for now. Good seeing everyone and hope you're doing well. Thank you, Q. We'll be sure to share that on our social media page as well also. Anybody else? Okay, if there are none, then that um, is pretty much our meeting for today. So moving on in the agenda is our final item, which is adjournment. <laughs> and so if um, there are no comments, questions, or updates, I would like to call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Hi, this is Jerry. I motion to adjourn the meeting at 12.53. Okay, Thank motion you. on the floor. Is there a second? Paul, yeah, baby. Let's hit the weekend. <laughs> I, I accept the motion. I forward the motion. President, please, let's rock and roll. This is great to see everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor, say aye or do a quick wave. All aye. Right. <laughs> All those opposed, any abstinations to prolong if there are none. Thank you again, everybody. Um, please pull some information from the chat while you can. Thank you, John, for sharing that. And thank you, Q, for sharing your contact information. Um, we will, again, do a follow-up email with um, a lot of the information that was shared out today. And again, this will be provided on our YouTube channel. Um, all of our meetings uh, are on that channel, so please be able to or um, encourage you to 
look at that and to um, get your information from there. So thank you everybody for being here today. We look forward to seeing you in May. Our next meeting will be May 21st. That is on the agenda. So please mark your calendars and we'll get the agenda out to you that week. All right. Good. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Kimberly. Absolutely. Have a good one. Have, Have a, good a good weekend, weekend everyone. Take care and may the creator be with each of you. We will see you next month.